Good afternoon, Mr. President, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. What is cell therapy? Cell therapy is a biological therapy. It is defined as an injection implantation of fetal or juvenile cells and tissue particles or peptides and physiological solutions. The purpose of cell therapy is not to remove a conspicuous symptom, but the elimination of the cause of the symptom. Not only the affected organ, but the entire complex of organ regulations should be taken into account. The endeavor to, retire, to retard or to repair losses of somatic and mental functions due to age has been a very old wish of medicine. Tales and legends of the Phantom of Eternal Juice or the magic drug are expressions of his, this human wish dream. But vitality is moreover a concept comprising the total organism which is tried of body, soul and spirit. Although the dysfunctions relate mostly or to partitional spheres, the term loss of vitality means the restricted vital expansion of the entire personality. This must be taken into consideration when optimizing a therapy, but the optimized therapy must not rely on single parameters alone. More important overall is that the patient expect a treatment in order to feel subjectively better and free from complaints. The function of cell therapy consists in the regeneration of performances of the organs and organ systems affected by sensine. Common dosages are 70 mg per vial or 150 mg per vial of lyophilized or deep frozen cell factors. These combinations provide good results in the revitalization. The following survey is intended to show possibilities of rendering the revitalization more individual with regard to the symptoms. There is a direct relation between the symptoms and the tissues to be selected. Care must be taken that for an individual treatment, usually not more than 10 to 12 cell factors are used, as otherwise the stress after the implantation would be too great. These combined tissues can be distributed in one or two simultaneous injections. The more weakened, run down and emaciated a patient is, the more he needs a good preliminary examination and a methodical after treatment. Fatiguing physical work and brain work should be avoided within the face of stress of three to five days. Medicaments stimulating the metabolism, combination of polyvitamin trace elements, membrane activators, neurodynamics on a biological basis, and enzyme preparations ought to be included into after the after treatment. Repeated treatments as part of the revitalization are necessary at intervals of three to six months, depending on the individual case. The individual of the syncene must be taken into consideration. Generally, a revitalization will be more effective the earlier it begins and the more regularly it is affected. The fifth decade of life is regarded as the optimal age of the beginning of a revitalization therapy. Measurable results can also be also obtained if a treatment is started in the eighth or ninth decade, but it should be realized that already existing degenerative processes may restrict the expected degree of the therapeutic improvement. Revit, uh, Kuhn and Knuchel saw in fundamental clinic studies the lipoprotein and cholesterol levels subside in 64 patients with arteriosclerosis within four to six weeks after injections of placenta cell factors. Stepanschitz and Schreiner found objective and subjective improvement in eight patients of 15 having vascular sclerosis treated with placenta. The, uh, the ergometrically, oscillometrically, and rheographically registered improvements persisted for at least eight months. 
Kleinsorge used the walking distance, the skin temperature and oscillography to substantiate the therapeutic results. The walking distance was doubled within 4 to 12 weeks after injection of placenta cell factors. These improvements persisted, persisted to 13 to 16 weeks in the majority of cases and up to half a year in four cases. Of 72 cases treated by Ötzmann with placenta or placenta liver and testis cell factors combined, 58 showed improvements. Reactive hyperamia, changes of skin temperature, lowering of cholesterol levels and increased walking distance were registered. As rates of success, Ötzmann quotes 73% of 150 patients Kuhn, 67% of 700 patients, and Rachel, 72% of 93 patients. For coronary sclerosis, Brandner examined 9 of 70 patients one year after the cell implantations. 5 showed improved ECG, 4 no changes of ECG, though they were free from complaints. Whereas saint, uh, certain scientists regard cardiac insufficiency as a contraindication against cell therapy because the stress of the injection alone constitutes an additional strain of the organism, Ötzmann drew a more differentiated conclusion. Doses of heart, liver and placenta cell factors were used in degenerative disorders of the myocardium. Those implantations re reduced the recompensation time after a short phase of lassitude the patients revived. Normalization of the blood protein levels and the calcium, sodium, potassium metabolism were analyzed by Schwerz, Raver and Ullendruck. However, fresh cardiac infections and the inflammatory heart diseases are improper to cell therapy. After an interval of three to six months and a clearly proved identification of scars, cell therapy is excellent for the blood circulation and promotes the contraction regulation mechanism of the heart. The regenerability of the myocardium by new budding of vessels has been substantiated by impressive studies. Diabetes constitutes a sociological medical problem with respect to its frequency and therapeutic problems. Diabetes is generally looked upon as a factor of risk for many other diseases because the vascular and circulatory lesions predispose an organism in other serious addictions. The first experimental studies by Dubois and Gonet proved that injected pancreatic cell fructose can produce a subtotally uh, pancreatectomized rats sufficient insulin to normalize the blood sugar. Remarkable was the intensive proliferation of the remaining B cell areas. Compared with these broadly founded experiments, the clinic lags behind. The most comprehensive studies in this field were submitted by Neubert and Stein. Of 179 diabetics that got cell therapy, 94 were evaluated catamnestically. In 40% of the patients, our improvement of the carbohydrate metabolism was observed. It ranged from the stabilization of the blood sugar with equal medication through the reduction of the tablets to the reduction of the dose of insulin. The favorable influence on diabetes as part of the so-called revitalizing treatments has been confirmed repeatedly.